why does God desire a dwelling place? And that's not me making that up. That we have the scriptures to back it up. God desires a dwelling place. In the Old Testament, he tells the Israelites, make a tabernacle, make a place for me. And he gives them instructions. And if we don't knock that out, if we don't nip that in the bud and help you understand that God loves you, he wants a relationship with you, he's yearning to have a deep communion, so much so that he's now chosen to dwell with you, to have a relationship with you, to put his Holy Spirit in you if you would believe in him. Mm -hmm. I understand. No, you look at me. I wanted to give you. I'm, I'm trying to work on that. I noticed that I've been cutting you off sometimes. I and, appreciate and, that. And, and I'm trying to. You too. No, I'm, I, no, I love you, bro. Um, but go ahead. No, go ahead. You... So when we talk about that companionship, um, there's a couple verses here. You can go to Matthew 28, 20. I am surely with you always to the very end of the age. I don't know if you've had friends who promise you, like, I'm going to be with you through everything. And then, I mean, I look around now and half of them are not even here. Sometimes it's hard to trust somebody. And Jesus is telling you, we're supposed to be having a relationship. We're supposed to be having a dialogue between you and I. It's not a, um, you just come and you tick off a box on a to-do list. There's something that's between, and, 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 and I want that. And you're like, well, how do I get that? That's why you're not encountering the presence. You're not getting that fullness. Your cup's not overflowing with the love from his presence. That being said, just kind of swinging back over, I um, know we talked about this on your notes. I want to talk about, I think, was it the security and the empowerment or the, it, it was the security and the encouragement when you have yes, the, see, uh, well, empowerment, I have strength and empowerment, strength and empowerment. So I, I want to, in my mind, I think when I heard strength, I heard security, um, I, I guess, because when I think about strength and empowerment, I think that you feel secure, mm -hmm. you feel strong. And I want to move to that I, because I really, I think that connects so well when you have a clear vision and you have that strong companionship, when you're enjoying those, those those benefits of encountering God when you're walking with him, when you're seeking him daily, I think it naturally comes that there's a there's an empowerment and there is a a strength or a security in your identity yeah. that you just go and you be the Christian that God called you to be. Whether it's maybe it's called to sing or dance or to preach or to teach or and then it's outside in whatever field of work you do. You know, we a lot of us we kind of mosey on through life like with our head down like a dog who's unsure. Like I'm gonna be honest. I, I see a lion and a bear, and he got my sheep. Papi, enjoy that meal <laughs> on the house. <laughs> on the on house, the house <laughs> on the house. As he like it rare. <laughs> Go ahead. Don't worry. I'll tell the owner of the sheep that's. I, I'll take the fall for it. Like no, no, it's on me. I mean, you gotta keep. You know, a, a, was it a sheep a day? Keep the lion away. So yeah. So it's like, like David was like. Who, who's this uncircumcised Philistine? He talked crazy. He talked crazy, that guy. And, 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 and he, but he backed it up. He did. Yeah. He, 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 he had that sense of security. Well, he, he knew. Remember what but he that, said wait, about wait, that sense of security came with what? Because he had a companionship in private. Yep. He, well, he had a great relationship in private. He knew the Lord and he had guidance because he knew what God called him to do and what didn't do. He knew he could do this. He knew he could do that. So he walked with a different step. And again, I go back to like a lot of Christians walk with their head down, defeated. They're like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And there's a reason why you're not having success because you're not going after what God called you to do. He can be everywhere. It's true. Companionship. I so if he's here, guys, he can be over there with y'all. Amen. If you just received that word. So moving forward, moving forward, Right. God called you into something, but you don't walk with that confidence. And it's going to sound silly, but some of you need to talk to maybe that obstacle at your job or that obstacle in your family or that obstacle in your career path school and say, hey, and that, you well, uncircumcised Philistine. Yeah, 